at this ain't it. When we talk about the destructive culture and behavior that continues to lead our youth to death or incarceration. And I'm live here from California State Prison. Let our youth know this ain't it. Waking up in the cell, this ain't it. Life is a living hell, this ain't it. Food tastes like trash, this ain't it. Lord, please forgive my past. This ain't it. What you doing in the street? Is it worth it? Death the prison, only two things that's for certain. If you take pride in being a good, loyal friend, don't come to prison. Because being a loyal friend in prison can get you killed. Now, I say that because when I was a Pelican Bay, while I was standing on the yard, with a few other dudes, there probably was about six or seven of us. Um, dude walked up to us and he said, uh, in a couple days, we're going to be removing one of our homies from the yard. So I'm just giving everybody a heads up so y'all know what's going on when y'all see it happen. Now, real quick, for y'all that don't know what a removal is, a removal is when you get in trouble on the yard amongst the inmates. And the decision has been made that you can no longer stay on the yard. So you're going to be removed by physical force. And that physical force is going to always be two people attacking you. It's likely with knives. One of them, if not both of them, will have knives. They're going to uh, beat, stab you until the police literally come pull them off of you. So that's what the removal is. So if he told us they was going to do a removal on the yard, he went around and he told everybody on the yard about their soil removal. So everybody on the yard knew that there was going to be a dude being removed within the next couple of days. The only person that didn't know was the dude. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. The dude was scheduled to be removed. So about day before the schedule was removed. The dude was supposed to be removed just stuff to roll it up off the yard. Now, if y'all don't know what roll it up off the yard means, go to the police, tell the police, I fear for my life, I can't be here, um, so take me off the yard. Once you tell the police that, they have no uh, choice but to remove me from the yard. So this guy, he got himself removed from the yard. So we later find out that he was uh, he was told by somebody that he was going to be removed. But to tell somebody that they're about to get removed is you know, that's a violation of prison rules. So we eventually found out who told him he was going to be removed. So the dude who told him was confronted. And uh, he was questioned by one of the shot callers on the yard. And uh, the shot caller asked him, hey, did you tell that dude he was about to get removed? He kept it real. He said, y'all told him. He said, man, you know that ain't cool. Why, why would you tell him? You ain't supposed to do that. He said, look, man. He said, man, that's my boy. He said, man, I fuck with him every day. I be walking around with him. His family to send me money. Said, man, that's my father, man. He said, I feel like as a real nigga, I had to at least let him know something was about to happen to him to keep his eyes open and be ready to defend himself. So when he say that, the shot caller like, you know what? Since you kept it real, I respect you. I respect everything you just said. Because of that, we're going to go ahead and uh, give you a pass on that. Just, just don't let it happen again. He's like, all right. So he walks off. You would think that's the end of the story. So shortly after he walks off, the shot, the shot caller begins to secretly orchestrate his removal from the yard. Um, so he goes around, you know, he uh, puts a plan together, and he tells people how to do that tipped him off, he's going to remove him now. So the removal was supposed to be scheduled for a few days later. Ironically, the day that the removal was scheduled to happen on was Christmas Day. That is the day they chose the removal. So on Christmas morning, he out there working out. He 
So he can get it good. The shot call is supposed to be good. He ain't got nothing to worry about. He out there working out. He ain't even paying attention. Dude walked up to him. He stabbed him. But before he stabbed him, he tell me, Merry Christmas. And then Damn. he ended up stabbing him multiple times. Multiple times. Now, if he stabbed him multiple times, he's continuing to tell me, Merry Christmas. As he's doing that, another dude jumps in, and they both get the beat and get stabbing on this man until the police came and pulled him off of him. This is another one of them moments where I sat there, and I'm looking at this, and I knew, like, man, this is fine. This is wrong. They really trying to kill this man. Fortunately, he didn't die, but I'm looking like they really trying to kill this man. But giving his friend a hands up that somebody's about to do something to him. And I knew at that moment, another moment, that I could put myself in a deadly environment where your so called friend looks you in your eyes and tell you he respects you and gonna give you a pass because he respects how you kept it real. And then turn around secretly get you stabbed. This is, this is, again, another moment where I just knew, like, this ain't, this ain't what I thought it was. This is a, this is a culture of a, of a bunch of people that, that don't really care about each other. Literally, everybody in this whole gang criminal culture is, is, is selfish. And the reason why I say selfish is because Everything that they're doing and, and acting tough, it's, it's all to make themselves feel good. It's all to make themselves feel feel relevant. It's all to, to make themselves succeed to get praised by their by they fellow gang members. And as I've stated before, you know, many, of, many of us that are involved in the criminal and gang lifestyle, you know, we are all broken, dealing with a, a, a lot of untreated trauma, using the gang and, and our reputation is a, is, a, is, a, is a negative coping tool that we use to make ourselves feel better. And I see that every day in prison. You know, dudes walking around with a mask on, acting like the toughest dude to keep, continue to get these praises from these people that really don't care for them. So, they all left to say, you're a person that cherish, value your friends, and take pride in being a loyal, good friend. Don't come to prison because being loyal to your friends gets you killed. What is the wisdom for today? Man, thank you for sharing that. I want to uh, touch on something for the next few minutes. Uh, then I got to wrap it up because I have to go back and clock in. But, um, you know, watching prison. Uh, documentaries and things like that we see certain weapons that are made behind bars um, one that caught my attention when i was watching a recent documentary was a glock dookie and um the other homemade weapons they were making that actually you know you can load up with human feces and and human bodily fluids and bleach and stuff and you actually shoot it at at someone um can you tell us about some of the weapons yeah. that are made behind bars One you just mentioned, you know, we are, a lot of inmates in here are very, very uh, creative. There's a, there's a countless uh, weapons. Um, just mentioned one. Um, I don't know exactly which one, but there's multiple uh, ways that people make things to uh, shoot projectiles at people. Um, they make them out of, you know, like, spinning devices where you can uh, spin them out of a tube. Some with uh, rubber bands made with plastic. Um, do a lot with plastic. People, you, you would never uh, imagine how many uh, knives you can make out of a, a, a shampoo bottle. Break the shampoo bottle down and make a, a knife out of it. Now, people use uh, chicken. They give it uh, chicken bones. Uh, they use chicken bones. A lot of prisons don't allow us to get uh, CD cases anymore because uh, uh, 
inmates, I've learned how to uh, help the CD cases down and roll them up to uh, make them into hard enough uh, objects uh, to stab somebody with. Uh, of course, I know y'all have all heard of the, uh, the, uh, the lock in the sock. That's, that, is, mm. that is one of the things I fear, um, especially when I was just looking at that dorm, because everybody has a lock. Lock batteries, all that type of stuff, and uh, put in the sock. Get the, that's one of the things that, uh, that living in the dorm, you got to be aware of, because you're sleeping at the dorm with 70 other people. Get a tour with somebody. You sleep, he come bust you in the head with a lock and a sock. Ain't no coming back from that. Mm. So, uh, yeah, that's just uh, a few of them that I can think of right now, but uh, they go they go on and on and on. And even the, the objects that you use to uh, to make fire with are very interesting when you uh, get to prison. They have uh, make lighters out of salt, and water, and batteries. Make lighters out of uh, out of uh, pencils, uh, wire. It's all uh, it's all very uh, creative when you see it, but it is all for uh, negative reasons. And you know, when you put a a bunch of broken uh, people, criminals in the environment, they ain't stupid. They gonna sit in their cells, you know, create some of the most dangerous weapons. Hmm. I know we don't have much time left, but I want to ask everybody out there to uh, to go to Amazon and buy Perry's book, Striving to Be a Failure by Perry D. Thompson Jr. You will not re um, regret getting this book. Waking up in the cell, this ain't it. Life is a living hell, this ain't it. Food tastes like trash, this ain't it. Lord, please forgive my past. This ain't it. What you doing in the street? Is it worth it? Death the prison, only two things, that's for certain.